things have been a little bit more difficult recently. I lost Adam, basically. One second, Adam. Go on then. Hi everyone and welcome back to our channel. So, as you would have seen in our last video, we are in London and we came down for Adam's celebration hearing for the finished UK adoption. Um, and yeah, so we're spending an extra night here. We stayed here last night. We're spending an extra night here so that we can do some fun things in and around London. We're currently on a pedalo on the Serpentine in Hyde Park. Hi. Captured in a photograph, remember how we used to sit in the vines. Yeah, oh. And I can hear you laugh it off. You always said mistakes I left in the past. Loving it. Are you having a time of your life? The best day ever. When I was pretty cold, it's only then we're gone. hotel at the moment having some snacks and something to eat we just got a meal deal from tesco because we are headed out this evening to see frozen on the west end um first time ever he'll be going to a musical going to the theater in the west end um i haven't filmed an awful lot today because adam has been very overtired so he's a little bit grumpy as of course kids are when they're overtired it's been a it was a late night last night and a long day today but yeah we're having a little bit of a rest and a little bit to eat and then we're gonna head out to the theater Obviously didn't get to film much again yesterday at the theatre, um, but it was amazing, honestly. Adam, did you like Frozen? Yeah. Yeah. The only thing, and it kind of spoiled it for me, was that in front of me, Adam had a great view, but in front of me there was a man who I would say was about six foot five. A very tall man sat in front of mummy, didn't he? And I couldn't see at least a third of the stage, which obviously was... A little bit sucky, but you enjoyed it, didn't you? Yeah! Who is your favourite character on the stage? Olaf. Olaf is funny, wasn't he? Oh, yeah. No. 
the reindeer. Oh yeah. But I was surprised at how many just sort of like couples, but like older couples there were there. Like there were a few children, but not that many. But yeah, a lot of older couples and the guy in front of me was just so tall. Honestly, I looked around and couldn't see anyone else that tall. It's just the luck of the draw, isn't it? But it just, yeah, it's just a bit sucky, really. But it was good. Um, almost made me cry at parts. My hairs on my arms stand on end, some of the singing. But anyway, um, we are now going to meet my friend Kate. She actually booked two places for breakfast. Um, I think we're going to the pancake one she booked because I think it might be a bit more relaxed and chilled for Adam. So they do all sorts of pancakes. I think they have an outdoor area. Well, it's outdoors at least, so it's a bit more casual whereas the other one that we were going to go to which is like a vegan place in borough market um might be a little bit more formal and just because he's a little bit tired it's best to just try and take it easy a bit today so yeah we're gonna walk there now we've just finished packing up we're gonna take all our bags to nanny who's still in bed because the, everyone else is having a bit of a lion um and then yeah we're gonna walk and go and see auntie Kate. <laughs> You were tall, I looked up From where I sat, wished I wouldn't dressed up Your first line, won't forget So is it true, no one's taking you yet I remember people, staring as we stepped outside They had only one goal, get me off of your mind I was no good, they said, you could do much better Now that we've come so far They're going nuts about how happy we are See the bond that we made It all seems real now that I'm not afraid And we really got them Yeah, we sure did write it out Cause we have each other That's what it's all about I was no good, they said You could do much better, but day after we got back from London now. Um, today we went to my friend's daughter's christening which is why I'm all dressed up um, and we got back a couple of hours ago. I didn't film as much in London as I had hoped and actually our time in London didn't quite go as I had hoped and I just thought it would be good to sit down and just explain what's really been going on because 
things have been a little bit more difficult recently um, and I just thought it'd be good to share that with you. I'm having to find like a balance between keeping it real with you all and you know so other people know what it's really like as well. I don't want to sugarcoat everything about motherhood and adoption but also still respecting Adam and not sharing anything that maybe when he's grown up and he looks back on that he wouldn't have wanted me to share. So it's really f a fine line and really hard to work out exactly what I should share and what I shouldn't. But the fact is that I vlogged our time in London. It looks like we're having a great time. We did have some great times, but I would say it's the hardest few days slash trip I've ever been on and it was really difficult. The thing is, and I'm still learning myself, but something that I feel people need to know about adoption and trauma is that even from as young as Adam being a newborn baby, even though he won't be able to understand that he knows that, he will, as a newborn baby, have experienced trauma from being separated from his biological mother. And I've always known that, and I've known that that will have a lasting impact even if he isn't like sort of aware of what it is. He also obviously is aware about his biological mother and what happened to her and this will have some sort of lasting impact on him as well and I do think it's probably going to get worse um, and harder for him as he gets older and he understands more and more and he'll never be able to meet her or get maybe any answers that he might have felt like he needed. Um, anyway, and then there's also, you know, between the ages of seven months and two years, he lived in that children's home and I wasn't there. Um, so the secure attachment that me and him had made for those first seven months was kind of a bit broken. I know I came out for visits, but I don't really know what sort of care he got in that time. All I do know is he learned to cry an awful lot because that was a way to get attention. When there's 20 other children around you, you cry if you need attention. Um, and it took a lot of time when I finally moved to Uganda to kind of get that out of him. Um, so there's all that. And then, of course, the huge change with coming from... Uganda to UK is probably traumatic for him as well. He, we've left behind a lot of his family. Um, even though I know it, I know it will be helpful for him in the long run, I just think obviously there are going to be some feelings there, even if he isn't able to express them very well at the moment. So take that all into consideration. Adoptive children, there is no adoption without loss. All adopted children, regardless of their stro story, have trauma of some sort. And then trauma and all this affects social skills, emotional behaviour, you know, all these things and it's so complex and even I don't fully understand it all and it's something I'm still learning and I am reaching out for more support on because I am having, there's just more, there's, I'm get, it's getting, things are getting harder, as he gets, Adam gets older, he is obviously feeling a lot more emotions and he's like struggling to regulate them um, and then obviously that then comes out in behaviour and so this trip to London, we had three, well, two very, very late nights. We did not expect them to be that late. We arrived really late on Thursday, and so he had a very late night, which, you know, happens sometimes. But it meant, but when Adam is tired, he struggles even more with his emotions, and there's no reasoning with him, really, at the moment. And... There's no point, because I know some people might say, I need to discipline him more. That's not going to help or change anything. I have tried all sorts of different things, um, and that is not the issue. It, again, it's a lot more complex. It isn't the same. And I know some people on here will have adopted and will know all about this, but some won't. Um, so just bear that in mind. Adoptive children, adopted children, have a lot of different needs um, than biological children. Anyway... I also want to point out that this is me being real with you all about this all. It's not one for any form of sympathy. It's not two to put anyone off adoption because I still think it's the most fantastic thing. There are so many children that need loving homes. But it is to be real with you all. And I know motherhood in general can be difficult, but there is a lot more of added complex things when it's to do with adopted children. Um, and obviously, again, every adopted child is individual and everyone will have different experiences, but these are mine at the moment. And I just wanted to be real with you all. You know, I may have seen, some of you here might have even seen us around London and seen the difficulties that I was having. And I don't want to hide that. It doesn't make sense to me to hide that 
if this if someone out there just resonates with this then you know but yeah at the moment very understandably adam is definitely having some difficulties with um regulating his emotions and yeah it's coming out in his behavior and in a place like london it can be an issue and actually on saturday so i met we met up with um my friend kate on saturday morning we went for pancakes and it was all going all right even though i was already worried because we had another late night on friday because we went to the musical which obviously we booked in advance um we did have some trouble at the musical as well but the biggest incident over the whole weekend which is what really tainted the weekend for me and i really want to try to remember it in a positive light because obviously it's been a huge weekend it was the very very final step in the adoption um i think once i've had a couple of good nights sleep i will look back on it differently but we were on south bank so it's right by the river thames it is well it has been really hot recently so it is incredibly busy in london it was a saturday um there are you know in europe all everyone is already on all the school holidays so it was absolutely packed it was so busy and i <laughs> i lost adam basically um oh. so i was with my friend kate at the time and i was about to be meeting up with my mum my brother and molly and i was just yeah just by westminster bridge just before the london eye and whatever happened happened but adam wasn't happy about it um and so i think this is partly because he feels he feels safe with me and with my family that he doesn't quite gr yet understand the danger of things either and he just always thinks that we'll be there for him and i think that's part of it as well um but he just stormed off into the crowd and within seconds me and my friend kate could not see him i just couldn't see him anywhere it was like honestly even like milliseconds it did not take long because all these people are walking and moving and so it's literally thousands of people Hang on. well this video was just interrupted by another incident with adam and my dad's now in with him um and i'm so grateful for that he responds so well to my dad he's got such a good relationship with my dad there's something else to remember is obviously i am with josh and things and he is with the, the other kids but in terms of adam right here right now um on my own you know well i'm not i have the support of my family but obviously it's very different to having the father figure the dad here as well and that does make things harder um anyway back to what i was saying i don't know where exactly i had gotten to but i was with my friend kate um in a very very busy area of london right on the river um, right by westminster bridge we were outside the sea life center and incident with adam meant that he really wasn't very happy and he just very quickly just stormed off into the crowd now he's probably only <laughs> 10 meters away when i just already he was then out of sight like not like that might even be further maybe five meters actually um it really wasn't very far at all and he was completely out of sight like i said it was so busy in london at this point um it's all the tourists are there and so there's already like hundreds of people in front of you but they're all <laughs> there's already hundreds of people in front of you but they're all moving constantly so that's like thousands and like oh my god it was just i you know what i don't even care if people come at me and say and want to say whatever they want to say to me about losing him because it happens to people all the time and i'm just going to be real about it but that feeling when you can't see your kid in a busy place like that like the panic so me and kate just separated and we were just rushing everywhere i was terrified because one because it was right on the river and the barriers are not that high um so i was really could have like leant over to look at the river he could fall in obviously i'm worried that in a busy place like that if someone sees a kid on their own they could easily just take them and that was probably my biggest worry at that point um i remember seeing years ago some sort of video um or, or it might have been some uh, audio recording of how someone who lost their child rang the police within like one minute of realizing their child was missing or something was so quick and it was from i think it was from a supermarket or something i can't remember it was here in the uk and how the police like managed to tap into all the security cameras and see this person who'd taken the kid and what followed them down the street and they were literally only like two minutes behind what was actually happening and they saw um him take the girl down to the tube and 
I think it was a girl, I'm making this up. Um, I don't remember the exact facts, it's just a video I saw years ago. And luckily because the mum had rang the police so quickly, they could track that so quickly and the security at the tube went and got the, that child off that man because once they've got, they, it was just, you know, it was eventually going to be completely impossible to find the child and, you know, they could get so far away so quickly. Um, so that was straight in my mind thinking, should I call the police? He'd only been gone like two minutes by this point, but I'm like, should I call the police because... I don't want to overreact, I know my child and I know he'd quite easily have just stormed off, seen something interesting and be staring at it, I know what he's like and to be completely oblivious to the panic that, you know, is upon his mother, but um, I didn't know what to do and I was managing to hold it together, just rushing around, I called my mum, or my brother actually, and they were literally two minutes away, so they came rushing over, my brother and my mum Molly, and obviously my Kate, Kate, my friend Kate was still there and we were just all in different directions just searching everywhere. My mum went into the Sea Life Centre, spoke straight to the front desk. Within seconds there was like six security guards with their like walkie talkies ready to check the cameras like rushing around. Molly went to London Dungeons and the same thing happened there. And then my brother walked into what's called, there's a new attraction there called Shrek Adventures or something and there's like a you know, gift shop attached to it and he just thought, wonder if he's in there. <laughs> and he was right so I don't know how he got out of sight and managed to dart right but he had managed to go into the toy shop my brother found him in there with a pile of things that he wanted to buy he obviously did not realize how much I was worried or what because like it's I don't know if that's because he feels so safe or just easily gets distracted but it was I saw him and I was mad and I wish I had like kept myself together a bit but I also know that I can't be too hard on myself because I was upset in that moment too you know um but I was obviously I told him off I really shouted at him um and security guards came over and they were much more calmly collected but obviously they didn't have the same sort of emotional reaction to it all so they like said to him how we were worried about him you know every everyone was looking for him because they all care about him and they were much more um yeah they dealt with it better i was just extremely mad at that point well anyway anyway his behavior didn't really improve after that so it was just a bit of a difficult weekend obviously really tainted the weekend for me that panic even i don't know it might have been like five minutes in the end to be honest that's a lot that's really long it feels like a lifetime anyway didn't think i was gonna cry because i haven't actually cried about it the whole time really held myself together <laughs> but um you know it's one thing having maybe like issues with emotions and behavior within the home when that happened somewhere really busy like London, it was just scary. I'm just so lucky that, oh, well, obviously the people in all those attractions are on it. They just, this isn't, doesn't just happen to me. This happens to other people. That's why they were so quick and knew exactly what to do, asking for des descriptions and everything. And I'm just so lucky that my mum and my brother and Molly were just, just there too, because I just, I, I felt like, Obviously they were panicked too, but they were a bit more, um, like, collected about it and what they were doing, whereas, yeah. Anyway, my point is, losing children happens to all sorts of people, but it happened to me mostly because of him. at the moment Adam is struggling a little bit with his emotions, which then is reflected in his behaviour, and then that led to me losing him in London on that day um, and um, it's, it's not just that there's lots of ongoing things but we are trying starting to try to work on it all I'm gonna look for some extra support with it all and this does not take away this is a small percentage of the time Adam is still the happiest most loving amazing little boy in the world so I don't want to make it seem like this is all the time at all because it's not but obviously when it does happen it's extremely draining emotionally as well and yeah obviously that was that was hard 
so just to break up what would have been <laughs> a lovely vlog of our time in London that was some realness for you all I hope I kind of explained everything as articulately as possible because I don't feel like I'm making much sense right now my head is feeling all a bit cloudy I'm just a bit tired and confused it's been a busy few days and a emotionally exhausting a few days so yeah I also feel like I might have repeated the same things over and over I'm not sure what I've even spoken about to be honest um but I, what what I think I need everyone to take away from this video is Adam is not badly behaved that isn't the issue and I do worry that obviously people in the streets who don't know us or whatever might just see that might just see a badly behaved child and not actually understand there's so much more to it than that another kind of quite large problem that I am now having to think about you know as sorting things out so it never happens is I do see people obviously looking at us funny when Adam is behaving um, and I'm having to like I don't know what drag him out of danger or whatever because obviously we don't look alike most people I mean most people hopefully be quite open-minded and also I do think it is somewhat in my benefit that I'm a white lady um I think if I was obviously if this was the other way around and it was a little white girl a black man it wouldn't it, I'm sure people would have approached us by now um but I do worry that people might think that something more sinister is going on and that I am trying to uh, kidnap Adam or something. And so even when my brother found Adam, he rang me straight away because he was like, I can't just drag him out of the shop. People are going to, you know, wonder what on earth I'm doing. Um, so I am starting to think about having like proof of the adoption, like just on my phone, ready to show people if I need to, because yeah, Adam is not badly behaved. He's just having some trouble at the moment. Um, and I just wanted to be real with you all and obviously when he's having trouble I'm having trouble because he's the love of my life and it weighs very heavily on my heart but anyway I'm going to end this video here now I hope that made somewhat some sense and yeah I'll see you all again next time bye guys <laughs>